Yeah. We are here in Boston, Massachusetts after a delightful lunch with two of the uh, biggest names in RV journalism. That's Bob Zagami with the, uh, the light yellow shirt and Chuck Woodbury uh, with the Seattle green because Chuck's from Seattle. Uh, we should say if Chuck uh, slurs his words, he just got off the red eye and uh, maybe a little bit tired. But uh, Chuck, tell us about your adventures uh, most recently. You've been uh, way over in Europe. Yeah, well, I just got back from Iceland, RVing Iceland, which is incredible. Small country where RVing, where the people are at least as crazy about RVing as we are, with more campgrounds per square mile than you'll see in the United States. I highly recommend it. Anybody that's going to Europe can uh, get on Icelandic Airlines and, and without any extra fare, you can stop in Reykjavik for, for a day or for a week, rent a little camper van, and um, and the, the loop road is about 900 miles. They, Do it in about five days to a week, and it's an incredible country. How Diverse. about uh, campsites? Uh, what kind of money we're dealing with? Oh, they charge per person, so... Um, oh, per person? About uh, $10 a person per night. And, then, and, of course, you can just pull over anywhere for free. It's common. Ah, okay. Uh, just pull over anywhere. and uh, Don't need a Walmart. You don't know Walmart. Don't need a Walmart. No, 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 Walmart. Not, no, in Iceland. <laughs> no Walmart. Not, not even, not even any McDonald's in, uh, oh, in Iceland. Yeah, um, which is you, kind of nice. Now you put a website up for that too, though. You could, yeah, people yeah. could uh, follow your travels there, and uh, your reporting on Iceland in the website. What R- was that site? RVIceland.com. RV, yeah. I pretty, pretty straightforward. Yeah. Uh, RVIceland.com. Um, and you came from Seattle and, and went there. So anybody coming from the East Coast, it's even a four-hour shorter. Uh, shorter ride and let, let's get into the thing because Bob had thought before oh it's going to be real cold there but Iceland is what warmer than most uh, well, major U.S. northern cities right? Reykjavik which is in the southwestern part is actually war- uh, the average temperature in the winter is warmer than New York City I think when you get up north into the almost to the Arctic Circle it's going to be a different story up there but most of the population two-thirds of the country's 300,000 people live in Reykjavik and it's a it's a you know it's a small town, uh, small big town, with everything, uh, a couple hundred thousand people. But no, it's not really that cold. It's not icebergs and ice hotels and and uh, igloos. Okay, we're going to come back to your U.S. trip coming up in just a minute. But Bob, you uh, have been around this industry for quite a while, and you've uh, recently reviewed some pretty cool uh, units for various national publications. Tell us about what. Uh, couple of those. Yeah, I've actually got two two in publication or in print right now getting ready to be published. Uh, the Thor Motorhome Ace 30-foot uh, touring vehicle, which was fantastic. We took that out to the Midwest this summer on a two-week tour. Great vehicle from Thor Motor Coach. And I just finished up a story on the Itasca Sonova 30-foot coach. And here again, we see the uh, 30-footers are a great size for people. With the slide-outs, a couple of slide-outs, you're getting all the functionality of a 32 or a 34-foot motorhome, and it's just a phenomenal thing to drive. You can turn it around in a parking lot such as this, stop at Starbucks and get a cup of coffee. So the 30-foot motorhome, the lightweight motorhomes, these were both built on the Ford V10 gas chassis, getting about 9 to 10 miles a gallon. Uh, great units. Great units. And Chuck, um, you're known for your publication, RVTravel.com, right? Yeah. Um, you had mentioned recently that you may be hitting the road again after uh, years of staying out in the northwest part of the United States. Tell us about those plans. Well, I think I'll just be out. Uh, we'll get out. I'll get out a few months next summer, and uh, you know, my daughter's off to college, so I have more time now. So I plan to go out a lot and uh, I'll probably do some more foreign RVing as well. Get down to Australia. I've done New Zealand, but uh, it's a big world. Yeah, you don't have to drive your RV there. You can rent one while you're there. No, you have trouble driving. Try. Yeah. <laughs> well, you also, you know, as we see with your own cameras here, John, the, the technology that we have now from the digital photography cameras, the digital video cameras, the computerized technology, the tablets, the smartphones, your 4G uh, cards that uh, give you tremendous speed on the road, there's no reason not to do it on the road. If your lifestyle permits it, if the job that you have permits it, and a great way to combine an, uh, your RV lifestyle or your RV travel needs and do it on the road and, and make a career of it. Right. Now, Bob, you have, have teased very well for the next segment that we want to do, which is about doing your business on the road. And we'll be back in another version. But thank you so much for uh, sharing with us here. And uh, have a great day, everybody.